Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Modern innovation and technology have enabled today's aircraft to operate from almost every imaginable runway, which can be both thrilling and challenging to the pilots. Whether it is vertical landing on amphibious assault ships, dirt landing on a makeshift runway, or trying to land on a moving narrow runway in the middle of the ocean. An aircraft carrier is basically a warship that also serves as a seagoing airbase. It is fully equipped with a full-length flight deck and facilities for launching, carrying, arming, deploying, and recovering aircraft. The Aviation Ordnance Team on an aircraft carrier inspects, operates, and manages the different types of ammunition and weaponry and also handles the arming and de-arming of aircraft. <laughs> aircraft carriers also act as supply lines for aircraft passing through the vessel. Most of these carriers were previously supplied by the Grumman C-1 Trader, but with time, it became insufficient due to its limited range and payload capacity. The need for a larger supplier for the numerous aircraft carriers in remote locations led the U.S. to consider using the C-130 Super Transporter. The challenge now was how to get this colossal aircraft with a wingspan of 132 feet to land on an aircraft carrier measuring just 1,067 feet in length and 238 feet wide. Finally, in October 1963, with over 29 touch-and-go landings and 21 unarrested full-stop landings on the deck of USS Forrestal, it was recorded that the 76,000-pound C-130 Hercules, carrying 13 tons of payload, could come to a complete stop within the available runway. The plane used only 745 feet for takeoff and 460 feet for landing roll. The C-130 has the longest continuous production run in the history of military aircraft, with over 2,500 aircraft spread across 32 variants. From operating on the world's highest airstrips to carrying excessive cargo loads, this aircraft has been one of the most versatile and effective transportation aircraft in U.S. military history. A few modern C-130 aircraft are also designed as gunships integrated with advanced sensors, navigation, and weapons systems.
With a squat stance fuselage and four big turboprop engines, the aircraft cruises at a relatively modest speed of up to 320 knots and is an ideal choice for transporting paratroopers and other equipment. Another special trait of the C-130 is its capability to perform austere landings and short takeoffs. Before it lands on a dirt strip or an unmarked runway, a team of air mobility liaison officers arrives at the location. They set up communication with the aircraft and secured the area to create a free zone, which is marked using combat identification panels to demarcate the landing threshold. The job of the aircraft pilot is then to land the aircraft in the designated zone and follow the instructions by the special ops team on the ground. Similar to the Lockheed Martin-made aircraft, the A-10 Thunderbolt aircraft by the Fairchild Republic is also capable of such instantaneous landings on restricted and unsophisticated locations, such as vehicular roads and abandoned runways. But first, the area must be confirmed and secured in advance by air mobility liaison officers. The Air Mobility Liaison Officers, or AMLOs, consist of pilots and navigators who are trained to help the aircraft take off and land safely when there is no air traffic control available. Uh, as AMLOs, we are a link between the Air Force and the Army uh, as far as air mobility is concerned. Um, we, we think of ourselves as translators uh, for the Army. We speak Army and Air Force, so we, we're kind of their go-between when they have issues moving cargo, moving passengers around. The procedures and duties of AMLOs include setting up markers for the aircraft before landing and takeoff, overseeing runway safety, managing radio communication with the crew of the aircraft, and coordinating with other personnel on board. You can tell that's good, Tony. On the other hand, commercial airport operations are carried out with much more ease due to the predetermined airfield operating procedures and runway markings. The runway's centerline markings are single dashed white lines painted on the center of the runway. The runway's usable pavement is bordered with white strips showing the edges or limits of the winching area for the plane. Solid white rectangles located on each side of the centerline, called aiming points, serve as a visual aiming point for a landing aircraft. Multiple white strips painted on the runway are touchdown markings that help pilots identify the area on the runway for touchdown. Besides these markings, runway lights with different colors also guide pilots while operating the plane on the runway, especially during night takeoff and landing. Red or green lights indicate the ending or starting points of a runway, whereas runway edge lights are white or yellow. 30, 20, retard, 5. Apart from the markings and other ground support, the runway's pavement friction is also regularly evaluated for the aircraft's operational safety. This includes identifying areas that may have experienced a loss in texture due to bad weather or rubber buildup, which may affect the braking actions of aircraft.
A few notable examples of friction testers include the Sarsis Surface Volvo Friction Tester, which is a Volvo V90 car installed with a friction measuring system. A measuring wheel mechanism is connected to an electronic sensor system that computes the runway's friction coefficient and reports runway friction in accordance with the requirement of the aviation governing agencies. Another runway friction tester, called the Skidometer by Moventer, has an onboard water pumping system, which stimulates wet pavement surface conditions and provides the operator with a continuous record of friction values along the length of the runway. However, the Federal Aviation Administration is planning to use new systems to better assess friction conditions of airport runways using data generated on board during landings. Flying an aircraft may not always be as pleasing or relaxing as sighting it soaring in the sky. Dedicated efforts, meticulous planning, vigilance, and years of experience are what make a flight journey start safely and end successfully. One side. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.